Hey, I'm Alec, and in this Matic Control tutorial, I'm going to be giving you an advanced overview of Matic Control's design tools and teach you how to design a 3D model. This tutorial will be very specific and detailed, so if you want to jump ahead to parts you know you want to see, go to the description down below or jump to these times. Hey there, I'm Alec from Matter Hackers, and in this tutorial, I will be going over the more advanced side of Matter Control design tools. Using a combination of different shapes, you can customize 3D models or cre even create your own. Now before I get started, I want to say that I'm using Matter Control 2.0 on PC, specifically using build 2.19.2. So if you feel like any of the buttons I'm talking about or these shapes I'm talking about aren't there when you're using it, then that may be the reason. Let me start off by giving you a brief tour of some of these tools. At the top, you have a toolbar where all of your operations are. On the left side, you have primitives, a collection of simple shapes that have a level of customizability to each of them, from the radius of a cylinder to the size of a font. You have several design tools you can work with. Cone, cube, cylinder, half cylinder, dome, half wedge, image converter, pyramid, ring, sphere, text, torus, and wedge. The add content in the top left will allow you to bring in models from your libraries or you can click open file to bring in models from somewhere else on your computer. Matter Control also has the usual cut, copy, paste, undo, redo, and delete buttons that are standard in any sort of editing software. In the top here, you have ungroup, which is useful for splitting apart a set of 3D models that are imported together. So you can print one at a time, or you can use group to move parts around together or scale them all at once. You'll also find the toggled support dropdown. By clicking the yellow box, you can turn any 3D model into supports, or you can click the drop down itself to bring down the automatically generated supports for your model. As mentioned before, lay flat is helpful to take a 3D model and bring it so that the bottom surface is flat against the bed. Let's bring in a cube and a cylinder to demonstrate the rest of the options, which are specific to design tools. First, you have a line, which you need to select two objects and then click the align button. From here, what you can do is you can align them based on the minimum of the x-axis, so they're lined up against the left edge, or they're centered on each other, or to the right. These are the same size, so nothing visually happened. So it's easier to see. I've expanded the diameter of the cylinder so that it will actually show things happening when I use the align. I'm going to select the cube first, hold shift and select the cylinder, and click align. From here, I can choose how I want to align these two objects. Do I want to align them based on the X, Y, or Z axis, or all three? And I can choose, do I want it to be based on the minimum of X, centered, max X? Do I want them to be minimum of Y, or max of Y? Now that means that this edge of the cylinder and this edge are tangent with the edge of the cube, or I could do a whole combination of all these. I can also open up the advanced menu so I can add offsets. Maybe instead of being right up against the edge, I want it 10 millimeters away from the edge. Or I want it so that the align, which is the cylinder moving around, and the anchor, which is the cube, are lined up so that their maxes are against each other or that the min is against each other. And let's remove the offsets, so that's easy to see. So the minimum of our anchor is lined up against the maximum of our align, or they center of the anchor is on the align, or we can do the max. And you can do this for all three of the different axes, so you can be very particular with how you line up your two shapes. Once you have two models selected, you can use combine, subtract, and intersect. Combine will take two models and make them one shape. Subtract will take one of the models and subtract it from the other. Or intersect will take the intersect of two models and leave that remaining. Subtract and replace is unique in that it works similarly to the other three, except instead of removing the parts, it will instead leave that part behind, which is really handy if you're trying to do dual extrusion, because now we can say that this cylinder is material one and the cube part is material two, and we can have it print exactly like this. And using subtract and replace will even work with your own 3D models. So let's say you've brought in something and you already know that this is all going to be my second color. You can use that to subtract it out of the original part and make its own model using that tool. Over here you also have your array options. There's linear array, which will array your parts in a line along a specific axis. You can pick how many do you want. There's also radial array, which does an array based around a center point. And it will show where the center point is, so you can specify maybe it's a 
larger center point, and instead of it being along the axis of x, it's actually up a little further, or maybe it's even coming up a little bit so that that's the center point, and we don't want to rotate the part. So these are all shaped the same as they go across, or it spins them around this point, or maybe we want the axis to the right, or we want it back. There's a lot of things you can change with radial array. Advanced array is like a combination of both, because you can have rotate, which instead of it being around a central point, it's how much you want this to rotate along a certain degree, and is it going to rotate the part? And you can scale it as it goes along. So I could change this to make 10 of these cylinders, and they slowly get smaller as they go out and stay centered. Or I could say I want it to arc the other direction. Or I could say, do I want it to be moving up as it goes around? There's a lot of fun things you can do with Advanced Array. Pinch and Curve allow you to modify a 3D model in interesting ways, like skew part of your model larger or smaller, like pinching the back of fill, or curving it around a central point. And our last one, Fit to Bounds, is best used when you are creating a model that you want to be able to come back to and modify, like using Fit to Bounds on text so you can change it to say whatever you want and it never expands past the boundary of the box. I'll start by bringing a model in from my desktop, which is a light switch plate that I had already downloaded. From there, I will bring in some text and put a fit to bounds on it. Now that I have this fit to bounds, I can select the plate, hold shift and select the text and align it on X. I will align it at the max of Y and at the height of Z. I want the text to stick out a bit, so I'll use a Z offset. Let's try two millimeters. It's a little tall, let's try 1.2. Looks good, but it's coming off the edge of the fillet there, which I'm not too fond of, so I'll adjust the y-axis so it's shifted down a bit. Let's try negative 10. Too far, let's do negative 8. So that put it in a good spot. I can now go back up in here and change my fit to bounds so that my boundary is larger or smaller. Let's try a width of 40, maybe 50 depth of 12. That looks good. Then I can go further back into text and I can have this say something like bathroom. Like this is supposed to be a light that turns on the bathroom light. Or this is the mirror light. And I can take this whole thing and copy it. And I can take this one and say, I want this text to say it lights up the fan. And I can go through and I can do this to as many as I want because I can right click up here, click save, and I'll save it to my cloud library as single light switch. And there we go. I can come back anytime I want. I can change the text to say anything. It's always going to stay aligned on the center. It's never going to expand outside this fit to bounds. So now that I have this, I can start printing these out, start mounting them all over the office, start mounting them at home, and they're going to say exactly what each switch actually goes to instead of just flicking all of them to figure out which one is the exact light that you need. And if I really wanted to, I could come back here instead and make it something specific, like make it say superhero and change the font so it's something a bit more fun, like maybe Russo. And then I can bring in an image converter and I can go ahead and add a base. That's the outline of it. And we'll make it not quite that tall. Maybe make it a three, have it totally filled in. Maybe make the base size, we'll keep that three. And I could print it out like that. And instead of the Matter Hackers logo, I could change it to something else. Maybe I have, you know, I have this, or I have a smiley face, and I can change it, or I can use this flower. So you can customize this if it's something that you want to have hanging in in your room or in your kid's room or something like that. You can really easily change this to match whatever you need it to look like without having to remodel the entire thing every time you want something different. And that's really all there is to it. I hope that gives you some ideas of how you can customize your 3D models or design your own using Matter Control design tools. I've seen a lot of creative ways you can use them, even just within the office, and I'm sure you'll come up with something even more impressive. You can also check out the help page in the top left corner by clicking the three bars and selecting help, and you can see some walkthroughs. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching.
Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.